Today we will be exploring fractals in architecture. Here is an overview of our presentation. First, we'll introduce fractals on a general level and show several manifestations of fractal geometry in architectural designs. Then, we will delve into various regions of the world to see how fractals were embodied into ancient to modern day buildings and the benefits that this geometrical technique provided. Thirdly, we will display and analyze an original design that tackles the current day issue. Finally, we will end with some frequently asked questions to further clarify what we explained. So first, what are fractals? Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self-similar across different scales. They are created by iterating a function over and over again. As you can see, there are many ways to display fractals visually. On the screen are the Mandelbrot set, Sierpinski's triangle, and Koch's curve, three very common visual representations of fractal geometry. We will explore all three in a moment. The most common occurrence of fractals is in nature. It is the most organic and original form of fractals and where the ideas of self-similarity and infinitely repeating patterns were derived from. After all, nature obviously existed much before Mandelbrot was even born, same with any of the other fractal mathematicians as well as every human being. Fractal geometry is a natural phenomenon that human beings attempted to imitate in their man-made constructions. Because of its prominence in nature and humans' close ties to nature ever since the beginning of mankind, it is no surprise that elements of this infinitely repeating pattern appears frequently in man-made structures. Throughout this presentation, a major focus will be on the impact that we get from fractal architecture, explaining why architects choose to incorporate self-similarity in their designs. Most of the time, this means positive benefits that are a direct result of using fractals. We will delve into specifics later. First, we'll talk about two distinct methods that architects utilize to build fractal-inspired buildings. The geometric intuitive method is when architects use fractal patterns as inspiration for creative expression. The geometric mathematical method, however, is when fractal usage is backed up by some sort of mathematical reasoning to calculate fractal dimension. This is also used in analysis of existing buildings. It is important to keep in mind that most of the examples we'll be covering today were built much before Mandelbrot, Sierpinski, and Koch contributed their findings to fractal mathematics. This means that in ancient buildings, fractals were used purely for aesthetic, religious, social, and other purposes without a formal equation backing it up. There is research supporting the fact that the human brain is actually composed of fractals and functions based on self-similar patterns. So, this can be connected to being naturally attracted to nature and fractal architecture in that there is some sort of self-recognition aspect to seeing fractals in our environment. Such architecture could be seen as an exterior version of our inner brain. There is something about the fractal structure that seems aesthetic to us. Experiments have shown over and over again that humans display a positive emotional affiliation with natural elements and settings, even benefiting from lowered stress levels. This is called biophilia, literally meaning the love for life. The second part of our presentation will cover a brief history of fractal architecture. Here's an overview of the fractal-inspired structures that we will explore today. First, we will go all the way back to before 1000 CE, when the first Hindu temples were built. Then, we will analyze the infamous Eiffel Tower. Thirdly, we will look at, this, at a specific settlement in Africa that cleverly utilizes fractals. Lastly, we will look at a modern-day example of fractal architecture and the current-day issues it, that it tackles. Here is a more in-detail timeline. The Lideta Mercado is a modern-day mall in Ethiopia. Our first structure is the Hindu temples. The most obvious fractal element to these temples is the iteration of the central spire. However, the very principles on which the temples were built were much more obviously linked to fractals. In Hindu philosophy, each part of the cosmos was thought to be the cosmos itself. Quote, the whole cosmic principle replicates itself again and again in ever smaller scales. The human being is said to contain within itself the entire cosmos. Striving to maintain a harmonious worldview, the central principles of the Hindu cosmos were incorporated into their worldly creations. The temples followed a set of guidelines, including the breaking up of a form and repeating it vertically or horizontally, repeating similar shapes and three-dimensional iteration of the central dome. The Koch curve is obtained by dividing a line into three parts, replacing the middle section with two or more segments of equal length, and then iterating in an infinite number of times. The rule for this curve is one of the architectural principles drawn from the Hindu cosmos. The main benefit of the fractal nature of the Hindu temple was that it brought the shape of the, of the man-made structure closer to nature and closer to what the Hindus believed was the structure of the entire universe. They were a physical manifestation of the Hindu philosophy, connecting their physical appearance to their religious purpose. 
The next piece of architecture is the Eiffel Tower. Built for the World Fair in 1887, its structure contains a self-repeating pattern of triangles. This artistic design was laughed at at the time, but we're going to take a closer look at its importance. The triangles within triangle structure bears a resemblance to the Sierpinski's triangle. However, this model was only discovered by Sierpinski in 1915, 28 years after the Eiffel Tower's construction. In fact, this design can be traced back to 13th century Italian art. Researchers in Europe are now looking into the possibility of creating, of creating structures with much higher levels of iteration than the Eiffel Tower. It is already well known that triangles are the ideal shape for load-bearing structures, but an iterated triangular structure could accomplish this with much less material, making the project much more cost-effective. Next up is the Ba Ila settlement in southern Zambia. This civilization is infamous for its village's ring-shaped configuration. From the aerial view, you can already see some sort of iteration going on, and is definitely very different from western architecture. Most primarily present in the design is the Mandelbrot set. If you zoom in on the spirals surrounding the Mandelbrot set, you will see a spiral consisting of smaller spirals going from larger size to smaller size. This is basically what is seen in the Ba Ila village, except it is a ring of rings instead of a spiral of spirals. The rings are lined up in descending order from the center, and now we will explore why the villages are shaped like this. The fractal design helps them order their village by social structure, with a decrease in size from the center representing a social gradient. There are three iterations in one village, with the smallest rings being small households, the rings of smaller rings being extended family, and the largest ring being the entire village. Each ring consists of a house and a livestock pen, and there are storage houses dotting the outskirts of the rings. In the center is a second iteration ring that belongs to the chief and his immediate family members. The Ba'ila people, like most African civilizations, were closely tied by kinship, so the use of fractals in their architecture conveys their cultural values in this way. Moving on to our final building analysis, the Lideta Mercato Mall in Ethiopia. This was built in the last decade, so there is definitely more mathematical basis behind this structure. The mall has a textile-like facade and also has circular fractals on the roof. If you look at the facade of the mall, there are definitely components of Serpinski's carpet, African architecture and patterns, as well as canter dust. There are big squares next to many smaller squares, and the whole building looks like a 3D version of Serpinski's carpet. There are elements of African culture in the design as well, since this square pattern is commonly found on African clothing, textiles, and pottery. The architect said that his design was based on open air markets in Ethiopia, as he wanted a building with good air ventilation. When the architect first received the request to build a mall, he cringed at the thought of building a stereotypical, boring, western-style shopping mall that consisted of a lot of glass and little air ventilation. It was only until he developed the idea of utilizing fractals that he feel inspired to pursue this project. As I mentioned before, the shopping mall prioritizes air ventilation for cooling. Since it is pretty hot for most of the year in Ethiopia, cooling is definitely a concern there. The fractal facade allows for effective cross-ventilation. This is the final part of our presentation where we will really apply the concepts that we research to create our own design. The essential question here is, what benefits can we get from using fractals in today's buildings? One benefit we chose to explore is daylighting. Daylighting is a practice of engineering a building to maximize the amount of natural lighting that goes into the windows. Today we will be applying the idea of daylighting to a common workplace or office building. This is the most basic design for an office building, just a rectangular prism. The issue with this is that while some offices on the edges of the building will have sufficient daylight, the offices in the middle will have no windows and no natural lighting at all. Here is a solution to the problem. Originally, the office building had a 900 feet perimeter. In this fractal enhanced version, inspired by the third iteration of Hilbert's space filling curve, there is a perimeter of 2,040 feet, more than double the amount. Although this design is certainly inspired by the third iteration of Hilbert's curve, it does not exactly follow it, since it still takes up the same amount of area as the rectangular prism office building on the previous slide. Despite using the same finite area, using fractals and infinite perimeter can be achieved. More perimeter means more surface area, leading to more natural lighting being in direct and indirect contact with the building's interior. This can lead to psychological benefits for the employees. I created a 3D model of the design in SketchUp. Let's watch a brief clip illustrating the building throughout the workday. So this is the building at 7 a.m., which is the beginning of a normal workday. As you can see, there are definitely some harsh shadows on this side. But as it nears noontime, almost every part of the building has sufficient daylight. 
as we get to later, this side has a disadvantage and has more shadows than the other side. But despite um, not having a whole workday's worth of perfect daylight, direct daylight, at least the middle part of the building has windows and has indirect sunlight, which is much better than the original rectangular prism. Maximizing natural lighting and views of nature in a workplace has tons of benefits. First, there are a bunch of health benefits, such as reduced eye strain, fewer headaches, and improved mood, all of which are proven by countless research. Workers are also less drowsy and have higher productivity rates and lower stress levels. Additionally, the utilization of natural lighting instead of artificial lighting reduces energy use, which is highly beneficial for the environment. This idea can be applied to Weston High School, since some classrooms, especially in the library, there are no windows at all. This could be problematic for the students and teachers' stress levels, as well as potentially harmful towards productivity rates in school. And of course, Fractal Architecture's list of benefits extends beyond just maximizing daylight. On the screen is a fractal configuration of solar panels to maximize the amount of sunlight that hits the panel. There are infinite ways for fractals to be incorporated into our architecture today, and infinite benefits that can follow. Thanks for watching!